So I really like speculating about weapon kits, and since we got some brand new specials in the game, I figure I would make an extra kit for every single weapon. The rules for this are going to be pretty simple. There will be a 5 maximum and 2 minimum for each sub and special to ensure I use a bit of them, except for missiles, because that special is poorly designed garbage. I'm going to assume the balance for these subs and specials is equal, so Slider is not here to be a death sentence. This is just my opinion and kits I created in this set of circumstances. Let me know what kind of kits you guys want in the comments, subscribe if you enjoy, and let's get started. First up, the cleared apple dualies. So this poor weapon has been stuck with bad kits like five times in a row now, so this is my idea of a good one. Fizzy Bomb is pretty obvious, it's a poke tool to help with its range disadvantage and can be a paint trail to help it approach. I figured Zuka would make a lot of sense on this weapon since it's very short range as well, and with a 190p charge with the Fizzy Bomb it should be pretty easy to get, meaning this apple should have much more options to get in than any of the others. There are some kits that are so good you just have to repeat them and End Parry is one of them. Curling Bomb mixed with the Dooley's mobility is just super fun, and Inkjet on the special with the rolls for the recall is amazing. This was just such a fun weapon to play in Splatoon 2, and I'd love for it to be back in Splatoon 3. Custom Dooley Sculpture I took a bit of an interesting route. I think this weapon's very mobile for mid-range and doesn't struggle to get in as much, so something like Beacon could be useful if you're playing more at the sides or potentially behind people, and Tacticooler could be very interesting on this weapon. It would of course let you go more aggressive, and I think the run speed from Cooler in particular would be really cool for your dodge roll slides, and in general, it could allow it to kind of be a mixture between aggressive and support between its team. Kensa Gluga was a bit of a tough one to come up with because I think Gluga is a very stationary weapon with its rolls, so I think Big Bubbler is a no-brainer pick for it that can allow it to play around that shield instead of a normal splash wall, and Fizzy Bomb could be really useful like it was in the Kensa kit, now farming a more useful special for the main weapon. Tetradulies and Zipcaster are just a perfect match. It looks so incredibly fun to be able to do, and I have to see that combo in the game. I decided to go with Curling Bomb for the sub to just add on to the mobility and keep the weapon feeling as fast as possible. For Kinsa Mini Swallowing, I wanted to go back to give it another supportive kit, but one with a bit of a different playstyle. Torpedo actually has pretty good combo synergy with it, even with the outside explosions of the torpedo turning you into a three shot. On top of that, not many people know this, but run speed actually stacks with Ink Vacuum, making you strafe significantly faster, meaning it should have pretty good synergy with a weapon that runs around three mains worth. For Heavy Swallowing, I decided to keep it simple, referencing the previous kits with point sensor to locate people, since it's fairly cheap and easy for Heavy to follow up on it, and Tri Strike to be able to move people at a distance, paint zone. It's generally just a really versatile kit. Hydra Swallowing is a kit I think could be really interesting. Pretty much every game, Hydra has struggled to deal with chargers, and I think Big Bubbler is the perfect solution for it. Mine is also good with Hydra since it's a deployable sub. It takes so long to charge that stuff like bombs don't have as much of an impact on the weapon, so something it can put down and be useful while it's firing is mainly what this weapon wants. Ballpoint Spotling would, of course, reference the Ballpoint Nouveau from Splatoon 2 with beacons, but now that Inkstorm's on a Nautilus kit, what could be even better but another special to play into aggressive potential and support a team like that, and Super Chump is just perfect for this weapon. It's a tool that still helps your team get in, but is even more useful, and if you have a beacon really far up, for instance, you can even chump near your beacon to hide jumps to it, which is just really cool. Nautilus players want a really aggressive kit and a kit to deal with chargers. So here you go. The same suction bomb from the second game, except now you get a Trizuka as an upgrade from your inkjet. For Ink Brush, I think it'd be cool to give this thing another bomb, and suction could be pretty useful for it. And Super Chump would allow you to have little distractions as well as cover if you're running into the enemy team. And with the speed Ink Brush provides, I think the special and main weapon actually have really good synergy. For Octobrush, I think a hybrid of its Splatoon 1 and 2 kits could be perfect. Autobahn was good on this thing in Splatoon 2 because it was cheap, but still had enough power to kind of poke and do the different utility it needed. And Kraken allows this weapon to get in really well in Splatoon 1 and could be useful for the same reason in this game. Tri Stringer is actually pulling some inspiration from the Bento Charger from Splatoon 1. I think the Wall Wave Breaker kit is really cool, but wouldn't make as much sense on Charger with E Leader having the same special. So instead, putting it on something like a bow could be way more useful, especially since Stringer can play off the location even better than the normal Charger with its combo potential and ability to hit over walls. For the Reflux, I want to try to give this weapon a much more aggressive playstyle, especially since you have to get so close to people and be risky to get your charge shots off. So Splat Bomb would give you a little bit of combo and poking power, and Kraken would be able to ensure that you can really get in and be a threat when you get through to the enemy team. For the Sploosh, I just want to go with its 
Sploosh 7 kit from Splatoon 1. The Trizuka worked really well with the lack of range it has, it could be fairly cheap, and the Swap Bomb has been great on this weapon in two different games. So I'll be honest with you guys, Junior has two near-perfect kits for it, so it could only really get something funny. And well, having a weapon where you could easily get triple dart would be pretty funny. To ensure that it's definitely a kit that still has some use though, let's just slap Crab Tank on top of it, because why not? Also, yeah, this is assuming the subs are balanced, so this will be triple good dart. For Aero Spray, I think Burst Bomb Ink Storm could still work. It obviously can't get Booyah back again, but Ink Storm would still be very combo heavy and kind of be a paint and fighting hybrid that would combo very well with both the main weapon and the Burst Bomb, which I think would be really fun. Finally, on the Spray Shooters is the Galactic Splatter Shot Nova. This one will actually be getting the Bronze Aero Spray Kit from Splatoon 2, and it'd probably work even better with it here, considering the extra range it has. I think the Burst Bomb is perfect to allow it to be aggressive, but still not have that good fighting power, and the Booyah Bomb could be a nice supportive special for its team. Fresh Squiffer is a pretty obvious one. This is the Charger that doesn't have a charge penalty when being in the air. It has gotten a recall special before with Inkjet, so let's upgrade it to Zipcaster and keep the suction bomb that's worked in both games. Bamboozler is also a hybrid of Splatoon 1 and 2. I think the Curling Bomb was actually pretty useful for its mobility, especially now that it's buffed to having 14 shots back, and Tri-Strike could be useful for moving people, painting objectives, and even a little bit of a Tri-Strike hit could combo very well with the main weapon. It's really hard to give Goo Tube or something to stand out. I think Suction Bomb worked fine with it before, so sure, we can go with that again, and Crab Tank's a very versatile special that should work well for it in pretty much any situation. For the Kelp Charger, it's also a reference kit to the Splatoon 1 version, and I think could work fairly well here. Sprinkler could protect yourself a tiny bit and help with special output, while Killer Whale can get your team in, as well as be used to locate people through walls. For the E-Leader, I think Beacon and Rain would be a nice combination. Beacon's been on it twice, and I think it's a sub that works fine for it, and Ink Storm was really useful to help with its painting capabilities and displacing people at a distance, something the Vanilla Kit special doesn't do as well. Sniper Rider is pretty ink hungry, so I decided to go with a cheaper sub with Ink Vine, something that could still help defend itself up close, and Booyah Bomb for a bit of extra survivability at a distance, as well as being able to get its team in. For the Splatana Wiper, it's hard to find a sub that fits better with it than Torpedo, but Fizzy Bomb would definitely give it a run for its money, with plenty of chip damage, focus on areas, and a paint trail, and Ink Storm would combo very well, allowing it to 3-shot with the normal horizontal slashes quite easily, and in general, having to deal with a wiper coming behind you that also has an ink storm to find you, move you, and paint for it would be really tricky to deal with. For the stamper, autobomb and it could be really useful, since sharking against this weapon is actually a pretty decent option, and it's still a nice poking bomb that could be cheap and easy for it to use. While booyah bomb could be used for survivability, it also allows you to play more passively if you want and use it to help support your team, giving it new play styles that it didn't have access to before, and especially being good against comps that can deal with zipcaster quite easily. So, L3 looked like it had Torpedo for a while, and honestly, I think the sub weapon has pretty good synergy with it. So sure, we'll go with it for this weapon and give it its inkjet back from Splatoon 2, as it was one of the best weapons for an inkjet niche by the end of that game, and is just really fun. H3 is obvious, the Cherry H3. Normally, a protection sub and special are very dangerous to give a weapon, but honestly, I think it's fine here with how slow H3 actually is, especially in this game. This kit is all about using the different protection from your kit to be able to advance slowly and take space, and I think the playstyle would work totally fine in this game. Squeeze is another ink hungry weapon that can kind of work with pretty much anything, so I think point sensor would be fine for kind of locating people at a distance, and vacuum would help for a more supportive playstyle. It would definitely be very different than what it's had before, but it could definitely work if the special was balanced a bit better. For Luna Blaster, I'm giving it a curling bomb to help its mobility and a crab tank to help its aggression, both at a distance and up close, which would work pretty well for this weapon, as I think crab is one of the best specials it could possibly get. For Custom Blaster, I think Toxic Mist could work fine on it, since it is more mobile than most of the blasters, and Inkjet works very well for it to be able to push up and get more aggressive plays off, really carrying a lot of momentum if you get some picks in the early fight. Hey Nintendo, do you remember Custom Range Blaster from Splatoon 1? It was like this really fun playstyle where you could be aggressive, you had to get off me tool, and a special to continue to go in, and now that special has a direct sound, it'd be really cool if we brought this back, right guys? It's gonna get Curling Reef Slider, but I will pray. Flash Blaster. I I think Autobomb could work well for it as a poking tool, and Killer Will 5.1 could be similar to the Stingray it had in Splatoon 2, except actually working with this weapon, as the combo damage would be extremely useful for three shot kills, drastically helping its kill time. For Rapid Blaster, once again, really hard to beat Torpedo, but Fizzy Bomb does a pretty good job with it and could help with it being more aggressive, and Super Chump could both combo with the weapon very well and help to tank for you if you are fighting in the Chumps. Meanwhile, for Rapid Pro, I really wanted the wall kit to be a bit more aggressive.
aggressive and healthy at times, and honestly, this would definitely do it. With Tacticooler being useful for your team and for yourself, giving you mobility and perfect jump accuracy to be aggressive. For Splattershot Pro, I think the spot bomb on it worked really well, and having a protection special that could allow you to set it more aggressively like Big Bubbler could be really interesting, while having a clearly different playstyle than the Junior that shares this kit. Now remember everybody, the whole idea of this video is that the subs and specials are balanced, so a balanced angle shooter could probably do what? 40 damage and actually combo with this thing, which the Wave Breaker could also do, as well as the special and sub potentially having good synergy to constantly tag enemies, which could be a very unique playstyle. For the Jet Squelcher, let's throw back to the most fun thing this kid has had by far, Burst Bomb and Kraken, being a much more aggressive backline that would play with its team and even be able to go ahead of it in the right situations, really pushing this weapon's aggressive potential to the max. For the Soda Slosher, I wanted to give it both a sub and special that could combo off the main weapon. A torpedo could be used as a pseudo burst bomb if you roll or bounce it, able to combo with the main weapon, while the slider's 60 damage would actually combo with the bucket for a one-shot. This was already useful in Splatoon 2 with Baller doing 50 damage and would only be a better combo in this game, definitely helping out for a special like this. For the tri Slosher, I wanted to give it a kit similar to its Splatoon 2 one, but a little bit more healthy. I think the burst bomb is fine on this weapon as the combo it has is not too extreme, while for Big Bubbler, I think it protected well, but not be as overpowering as armor was in that game. So I think this would end up really fun and have a unique playstyle compared to the other two. So this kit is a reference of previous things it's had with Point Sensor and Stingray, but I think it works a little bit better here, as the line marker can at least locate and combo with people, as well as Killer Whale being able to do similar. For Explosher, I think Beacon would have way better synergy with it than people realize, since the location effect it provides when people are up close can be especially useful for this weapon. At the same time, Wave Breaker is a no-brainer, being great combo and location potential, which would be amazing for this weapon. For Blob Lobber, this weapon is all about leaving annoying blobs that can be difficult to deal with. So let's give it a wall so it's even more difficult to take out the blob, and nine chumps you also have to worry about while dodging the blob shots. Just the absolute area denial weapon that could position more aggressively than the current one. For Slaprella, Torpedo could give it potential combos, as well as throw them in the air to give them something else to shoot at. And while they're shooting at the Torpedo, you can get a shot off and get your shield back up. And Wavebreaker would be something that could help protect you, and you protect the Wave Breaker while providing combo potential. For Tenebrella, Curling Bomb would be a really cool way to give a weapon that normally can't move very fast a way out of tricky situations and interesting mix-ups with the shield also being active. And this is the only Ultra Stamp weapon that can actually use its stamp to push in the front since it can also use its shield to add to the protection, something that was especially powerful with objectives even at the end of Splatoon 2. Undercover Umbrella just straight up needs Burst Bomb. Let's be honest, everybody. This main weapon really needs help with its damage and the Storm is also made to do that, helping with paint, damage, and farming assists that could allow you to regen the shield back. It is definitely a kit made to try and carry the weapon. splash matic Neo was completely robbed of Zipcaster. It was such a cool combination, and it made so much sense because it was a shooter with no jump RNG, meaning it would work fine with the weapon. So we're going to put it back and give it Toxicness that it had in Splatoon 2 with the Inkjet kit. It would be fairly cheap points for special, so it could play for it a lot since it has a sub that doesn't paint. You could also even miss people who you're going to Zipcast to if they're close enough to make it harder for them to dodge. It's really hard to reference a splatter shot kit without using Burst Bomb, and eh, that one's kind of Splash's thing. However, anyone who's fought Inner Agent 3 will know about a bunch of auto bombs and a bunch of ink jets. And considering they use the classic Hero Shot, which we totally should have as a skin anyway, this feels like an easy Wasabi kit we could do. For the 52 Gal, Fizzy Bomb could be useful as a mobility and poking tool, and Reef Slider would have decent combo potential with the main weapon, allowing you to get one shot in order to kill if anyone got hit with the explosion. Finally, for NZAP83, it had a really cool playstyle of constantly playing for and getting Kraken to get itself and its team in, which while niche would probably be way more useful in this game, so I think it'd be a cool kit to repeat that would allow it to play way more aggressively than it can right now. For the Carbon Roller, it's hard to top a burst bomb, but Torpedo definitely comes close with a similar utility, and I think Crab Tank could be very useful on it. Even if it would be tricky to use if you're positioning up close, it could give you a way to break in or get your team in 
at a distance. For Splat Roller, Splat Bomb does work decently well for it as a poke option, and with a 180p Super Chump, it could use that as a distraction to help get the main weapon itself in, as well as block for it up close. For the Dynamo Roller, Fizzy Bomb could be useful for both poking and a paint trail, allowing it to help with mobility and a way to move people at a distance, which is something it hasn't really had before. Booyah Bomb, on the other hand, is also really flexible, with both a survivability tool for the user, paint for your team, and displacement for opponents. It is a versatile kit made to cover it in any situation it might need. For the Flingza Roller, I think that Suction Bomb was a fine sub that could work with it again in this game, allowing it to be a little bit more aggressive. And Inkjet has never been on a roller before, useful in similar situations such as peeking under a ledge since it would also protect your recall. Alright, I already know you guys are going to be disappointed by the next kit, so let's talk about it first! Alright! So here's the thing with this kit. It's another one where if the special is balanced, it would work quite well, since if it actually protected the user and had the hitbox that worked properly, it would allow a weapon that normally has zero way to protect itself to actually be able to block for itself and its team. While Auto Bomb as a sub weapon would allow you to poke at a distance to locate people, giving you a bit more utility while also being cheap enough to not take away from painting. And that is one kit for every weapon. I think it's more interesting to try and come up for a kit with every weapon in the similar kind of perspective that the devs might have in terms of limiting and trying to pick things based on synergy instead of strength. Let me know what you guys think with what I came up with and what kits you want to see in the comments, and I'll see you all next time.